Hey guys, this is Thatcher and welcome to episode four of my DCTL coding tutorial series. This one will hopefully be a little shorter than the others. We're going to be making a DCTL that does output blanking. In the process, we're finally going to be making use of some of the other arguments in the transform function. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and describe what output blanking is in case you're not familiar. If you're in Resolve and you have some kind of clip open, you can go to Timeline Output Blanking and say set that to 2.39 and that'll add these black bars to the top and bottom of the frame. So if your image was intended to be composed with this aspect ratio, you can monitor in that way without setting your timeline resolution to 2.39 to 1. You'll often see on YouTube that people have some kind of like blackbars.png image that they'll overlay on another layer in their timeline but I think it's cleaner for these black bars to be rendered as part of the export process rather than at the editing stage. Resolve's implementation of these two black bars with the output blanking parameter leaves a couple of things to be desired. First, this output blanking applies to the entire timeline. If you wanted to have a series of clips where some of them have the black bars and some of them do not, then you're kind of out of luck. Additionally, if you want to do the thing that I kind of hate but I've seen many times before, where the black bars scoot into the top and bottom of the frame gradually over the course of one shot. We can't really keyframe that here. So let's make a DCTL in which you can specify the aspect ratio that you want to not be covered by the black bars. Well, what sort of things would I want in this DCTL? I think first I'd want a slider in which I can specify any arbitrary aspect ratio I'd like. Additionally, I'd want this behavior that if the timeline resolution is wider than the aspect ratio specified in the DCTL, we should pillar box the image, meaning putting black bars on the left and right sides. Additionally, if the timeline aspect ratio is taller than the selected aspect ratio, we should letter box and put the black bars on the top and bottom, just like DaVinci Resolve does. Let's go ahead and actually make this DCTL. First, I'll make a new file and I'll title it DCTL Tutorial for Output Blanking. For this DCTL, we're going to be using the same transform function signature as before. Okay, before we get into the math, what you'll notice from the previous episodes in this series is that we only actually made use of these three parameters, the red, green, and blue components of the current working pixel. However, we're given more information, the X and Y coordinates of the current pixel, as well as the width and height of the entire image. These four parameters are all integers. Because this DCTL actually does something different depending on the location of the current pixel, we're going to have to make use of these four parameters. All right, now it's a good time to think about the math. We're back in Resolve, and I would like to highlight that our output blanking shows aspect ratios in this way. These numbers represent the width of the image relative to a unit height, a height of one. If I were to choose 2.0, then the black bars would be filled in so that the remaining image is twice as wide as it is tall. The overall width of the image hasn't changed. It's just that the height has been reduced in order to fit this ratio. With this in mind, let's think about how to actually approach this DCTL. Sometimes I think it makes sense to start by writing out the parameters at the top. All right, I've set up our parameter aspect ratio. That'll allow the user to specify what aspect ratio they want the final image to have. Using the logic specified here on the right, I think it makes sense to look at the current timeline aspect ratio given by the ratio of P width to P height and compare it to the user selected aspect ratio. If the timeline aspect ratio given by P width and P height is wider than the aspect ratio given by the user, in other words, the user's selected aspect ratio is taller than the timeline aspect ratio, we'll want to pillar box the image and black out the left and right sides. This means that the height of the image will be unchanged. Given an image with the desired height and the user-defined aspect ratio, we can identify what width will be necessary in order to reach this aspect ratio. Likewise, if we're given a desired width and the user-selected aspect ratio, 
we can calculate the necessary height for the final image. Let's add this logic as a comment. After we've done this conditional, we'll have the width and height that we want in the final image, and we just have to black out the parts outside of that area. All right, let's go ahead and start implementing this and see where we go. First, we're going to be computing the timeline aspect ratio given by p width and p height. The aspect ratio is clearly going to be a float. I'll call it timeline aspect ratio, and I'll set it equal to p width divided by p height. Now, those of you who are familiar with programming in languages like C will recognize that p width and p height are both integers. When we simply take the division between two integers, we're going to be using what's called integer division, which returns another integer. In other words, we'll do the division and then we'll truncate it or round down to the lower number. So if the timeline was an aspect ratio like 16 to 9, then the timeline aspect ratio would just become 1.0 because this would be evaluated as the integer 1 and that would be assigned to this float, therefore becoming 1.0. In order to avoid this, let's cast p width and p height as floats using the word float within parentheses. All right, this converts p width and p height into floats and then does the division therefore giving us the correct timeline aspect ratio. We'll note that because width is in the numerator here, if the timeline aspect ratio is larger than the user selected aspect ratio, then that would imply that the timeline aspect ratio is wider. Let's write that out. All right, now all we have to do is compute the desired width and the desired height in these two scenarios. I'm going to start off by declaring these variables outside these if statements. Now, given the height or width that we want to remain constant, let's compute the other value. All right, at this point, we have the desired width and the desired height of the image that we want to keep. Let's figure out overall how this blacking out a certain region is going to look. I'm going to declare a float3 output that will by default be the current pixel value. This is going to be the value that we will ultimately return. Between declaring out and finally returning it, we're going to want to check if the current pixel is within one of these regions that should be black, either on the top and bottom or on the left and right sides of the frame. In order to do this check, we need to figure out how large each bar is. We need to look at the desired width and desired height, and compare those to p width and p height. When p height, for example, is larger than the desired height, there will be a difference between these two numbers. The size of the bar on the top and bottom will each be half of that difference. Likewise, if p width is larger than the desired width, then half of that difference will become the width of the bar on the left and the width of the bar on the right sides. Let's try to write this out as a comment. I think we can go ahead and fill out these two comments real quick. And we can do the same with the height. Now we have to do the part that we've all been waiting for. We have to check whether the current pixel located at px, py, is within the left bar, the right bar, the top bar, or the bottom bar. 
If so, then instead of returning the current pixel color, we want to return black. Before we get into this, let me clarify what the origin of this coordinate system is. Px will be zero on the left edge of the frame, and Py will be zero on the top edge of the frame. Py will increase from zero to the height, for example, 1080 for a full HD timeline. Px will increase from zero to the width of the frame, where the width can be a number like 1920 for a full HD timeline. Assuming the sidebar width is not zero, then if the current pixel is within the sidebar on the left side of the frame, then its x value will be between zero and the sidebar width. Another possibility is that the current pixel will be in the right sidebar. In that scenario, then the x coordinate will be greater than the width of the entire frame minus the width of the sidebar. We're going to use two pipes to indicate the logical or. So this means or p of x is less than sidebar width or p of x is greater than p width minus the sidebar width. Let's also consider the top and bottom bars. If the current pixel is within the top black bar, then the Y coordinate will be less than the top bar width. And the last scenario is that the current pixel is within the bottom bar, in which case its Y coordinate will be greater than the height of the frame minus the top bar width. Okay. If any of these things are true, then we're going to want to make the current pixel black. We can simply do that with make float three. All right, let's go ahead and test out this DCTL. I'll copy it into my LUT folder and restart resolve. Let's start off by turning off our existing output blanking, if it's there. And let's open up our DCTL. OK, we can already see that we have some output blanking going on on the left and right sides. And if we scale this up and down, we can see that it is properly maintaining the height or width of the frame as desired. All right, so that about covers it for this episode. We went over what output blanking is and why we would want to make a DCTL for this kind of tool. And then we made use of the width, height, x, and y coordinates within the transform function to make something that's actually useful for us. That's all I've got for today, and I hope to see you in the next episode of this DCTL coding tutorial.